We're just days away from a major pattern change to our weather. Cold air is taking over the east for Thanksgiving, and some of that cold air will try and stick around through December. And with that, we're likely to see our snow chances increase. It's November 23rd, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. I wanted to start off by taking a look at our temperatures. This is actually the highs for today, and you can see we're breaking some records up here in Minnesota, including Minneapolis with a high of 56 today. Jacksonville, Florida looks to also set a record with a high of 83. But believe me, Minnesota, Jacksonville, you're going to cool down and everyone now east. Let's move forward. This is our 00Z run from last night from the European model. So here we go. We're pretty warm from coast to coast right now. Moving forward, we're going to go into Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. Here comes this shot of cold air the day before Thanksgiving, and it's going to get colder as we move into Thanksgiving. So let's move into Thanksgiving evening. There you go. Big cool down for the east. This air is anywhere between 5 to 20 degrees below average. You can see very cool temperatures for the Ohio Valley and portions of the upper Midwest and northern plains as well. This cold air will stick around for a little bit after Thanksgiving. Here's the 29th, the 30th, but then there's a warm-up right here, December 1st. This could also be an issue because we could be talking about the potential for severe weather, an ice storm, and some pretty big snow. When you have these big temperature gradients and this very cold winter air pushing up against this moist air off the Gulf this time of year, you can get some pretty crazy setups. And the models do show the potential for all of those, like I said, severe weather, ice, and snow. So December 1st, December 2nd, we're getting really cold down here. I mean, the Europeans thinking we could get 30 to 40 degrees below average maybe out here through portions of the Rockies and Plains. But that area is going to try and move out to the east. Now, we do expect to have kind of a southeastern ridge set up here. We're probably going to have some record high temperatures out here because as I've said before, hot, warm air pools up ahead of cold air. So you can get some really high temperatures out in front of this cold air. Moving into the fourth, fifth, sixth. Now we're getting towards the end of the model, like I always say, la la land, but really Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, for the most part, we're staying average to above average. Whereas the rest of the country, again, from coast to coast, we're pretty cold. And you can see that all the way through the end of the model. Now we really don't trust this far out, but we do expect to see a very cold start to December for much of the states. This is what the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration thinks our temperatures could be from December 6th to December 19th. You can see average to below average for much of the country, except for down here to the south. And this is pretty typical La Nina behavior, colder anomalies up north and warmer anomalies down to the south. Although I do think this cold air will punch a little bit farther down to the south. A lot of times with these Arctic blasts, you do get that air sinking down into the southern plains. And in my opinion, I don't think this outlook's fully accounting for that. Okay, so now that we've looked at our temperatures moving forward, let's get into our future reflectivity here. Moving into Monday, Tuesday, there's going to be a severe threat likely down here through portions of the Southern Plains and Dixie Alley. So we are going to have to watch out for that. The Storm Prediction Center has already given us a decent sized marginal and slight risk down here for severe weather. This does include cities like Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, much of Northern Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, and Northwestern Mississippi. Taking a look at our four panel here, we do have the threat for hail, wind, and tornadoes. And this isn't just a 2%. We actually have a 2 to 5% right here through portions of Eastern Texas, Northern Louisiana, and Southern Arkansas. So that 5% is really just off to the Southeast of Dallas, Fort worth, but we could see this shift. So we're going to have to stay updated. And if you're in this area tomorrow, you want to make sure you have a way to get alerts. Now, as we get later into Tuesday, like I said, we'll see that weather shifting farther out to the east and that severe threat could push off into the southeast or towards the eastern seaboard. So we'll keep our eye on that. Now we're looking at the 25th. Our cold air trough is starting to dive down. Some of this moisture is linking up and we get this low pressure system forming in the upper Midwest. Now the timing of this moisture and this trough is really going to determine how much snow falls and where it falls from this system. We've been seeing some models models continuously bringing the snow a little bit farther to the north. The GFS was actually one of the first models that said, hey, this might come a little bit farther south and throw some snow into Minneapolis and portions of Wisconsin. And you can see on the latest Euro, it is throwing that back end snow really into the whole state of Minnesota. And then it's going to be into northern Wisconsin and North Dakota and portions of northern South Dakota look to get in on the snow as well. Now, this could be a little bit more amplified than we see here. Again, it's a timing thing. I think we'll probably see on the high end six inches into Minneapolis on the low end, a half inch to an inch. Moving into the day before Thanksgiving, Giving. there's all that moisture running up the east coast and all of this cold air diving down like i said now this trough is going to run right over the great lakes the waters are still decently warm for this time of year in the great lakes and this should really start to kick off some amplified lake effect snow and again which way are our winds coming from this is kind of a northwesterly wind it's going to turn into a westerly wind as this low pressure begins to move off into the north and east so buffalo Erie. A lot of you guys out here to the east of the Great Lakes are going to see decent lake effect snow, I think. And Western Michigan, I think you'll see some good snow totals as well. So we move past 
last Thanksgiving, our polar jet begins to buckle, and then we're trying to get some snowstorms that want to ride along the northern edge of this polar jet with maybe some rain to the south and some ice in between. And this is classic as we continue to transition into winter, but I'm hopeful we don't see this type of ice storm. This actually doesn't look as bad as it did a day or two ago, but again, as we get into early December, December 1st, December 2nd, with that jet stream collapsing down into that warmer, moist air to the south and east, this type of stuff is inevitable, where you get that snow, ice, rain, just a big winter storm mess. Portions of the Midwest, central to southern plains, we're going to be watching out for that ice and snow. And then maybe we see this kind of mess of a winter storm transfer off into the northeast as we get towards December 3rd, December 4th, but we're getting pretty late in the model run here. The latest GFS sees a similar outcome to the Euro over the next 100 to 120 hours, but then watch what happens here as we get towards 150, 160 hours. This would be November 29th. You get a decent snowstorm for Des Moines, Chicago, Detroit, maybe even a little snow down here into St. Louis. The GFS does like this polar jet to get pretty far south. The moisture is probably going to be there. The GFS right here, big amplified trough. This would be huge snow, not just for the elevated regions out here in the Rockies, but for the lowland as well. And then we get a really strong storm system up here, 982 millibar low that begins to transfer off into the upper Midwest. And again, this would be big, big snow through here. The GFS sees like 35 inches of snow into Minneapolis in the next 10 days. I love snow. I live in Minneapolis. I'd love that, but... I'm not quite buying it yet. And pay no mind to this tropical landfall down here in the Gulf. There's the possibility we do get one more tropical system forming down in the Caribbean, but TCG or tropical cyclogenesis isn't really seen within the next 150 hours. It's closer to 200 hours out. So I could easily see this falling off the model runs. Snow total wise through the first week of December, you can see the Euro really likes the Rockies, the Plains, the Great Lake region, and inner New England. The GFS as well. And like I said, it wants to absolutely bury minnesota it wants to give minnesota 80 percent of its snow average of the year <laughs> in the next like 10 to 14 days there's definitely a big target on the upper midwest for snow but i don't know if it's going to be this aggressive but the gfs as you can see pretty much agrees and then our euro ai model actually keeps this snow kind of out of the central plains but still likes the rockies upper midwest northern plains great lake region and then new england although it brings some of the snow out towards the coast it tries to give a little snow from philly to boston through new york city as well so that's what the euro ai likes now as i said if you're out in the ohio valley mid-atlantic maybe even down there in the southeast and you're saying man i thought we had a chance in early december it still looks like you're gonna have a good chance in december I mean, this pattern is favoring the plains and kind of northern tier states, like I said, inner New England here over the short term. But if you look at the mid-range forecast, especially with what's happening with our MJO, it does look like that cold air and winter storm track is going to transfer out east as we move through December, potentially even as early as the second week of December. All right, so what's going on with our teleconnections? Our Arctic oscillation control wants to stay negative. The mean wants to stay close to neutral. Not a bad sign for cold air moving forward in the states. Taking a look at the latest forecast for our EPO or Eastern Pacific oscillation, this is our large large Alaskan ridge that sets up that allows a lot of that cold air into the plains and out east, sometimes into the west as long as you have a negative PNA. This is what we're looking at here for around Thanksgiving and the few days after it. Then our Alaskan ridge kind of tries to move out and then we get another Alaskan ridge again. I mean, really up through Christmas, it looks like we're going to have a lot of ridging up there around Alaska which is good, again, for cold air from coast to coast, typically in the States. This is for my people out east, especially in the mid-Atlantic and New England coastal region that want snow. You want the NAO to go a little bit negative here. And as I said, as we get into the second week of December, it does look like we're going to get a stretch of a negative NAO here, which allows for some blocking and enhanced winter storm tracks out in your region. And it's kind of good timing too, because you can see Christmas is right around here. So, hey, a little bit of blocking for a week or two out there leading up into Christmas, that's going to elevate your chances for a white Christmas. Taking a look at our PNA, staying pretty neutral to negative as we lead up into Christmas. Again, this is why I think NOAA isn't just showing cold for the east or cold for the west through the first kind of three weeks of December. They're showing really an average of cold for everyone. Here's our Western Pacific Oscillation. As a whole, it's pretty negative throughout December. Tries to move positive here somewhere in mid-December, but as a whole, we're pretty negative leading up into Christmas time or really for the month of December. What does this do? High latitude blocking. This allows more cold air to stay trapped down in the States as well. So again, pretty cold signal moving ahead from the Euro. The last thing I wanted to mention before wrapping this video up is if we take a look at our European weeklies, 500 millibar height anomaly here, but you can see pushing through December, we're getting this troughing down into the States and it's especially favoring the East Coast still as we get through the second, third week of December. Now, when you push out this far, you can't fully trust anything. Although the European has been showing this nonstop for a couple weeks now. So it's been really, really confident <laughs> if we don't end up with some sort of cold air troughing or potentially a decent winter storm track out East for a really mid to late December, I'd be pretty surprised, although it could happen again, because this is still at range. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I make posts like this every day. I stream every morning to try and answer all of your weather related questions. And if you want to become a member of the climate crew, the link to the discord is right down in the description. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream.